You want me to put that on my todger? Do not mention her. Caroline Graham writes in the mail, The sweet revenge of Harry's wife's first husband, or some might say second. Trevor Engelson is now a father, a Hollywood hotshot, and married to a multimillionaire heiress worth $250 million. Their friends still avoid mentioning the M word. It was a typical lunchtime at Il Pasteo Italian restaurant in Beverly Hills, a hotspot loved by celebrity agents, hotshot Hollywood managers, and stars such as Justin Bieber and Al Pacino. At a sunny corner table, a ruggedly handsome man wearing gold-rimmed sunglasses held court with a group of managers and agents. While many in the packed restaurant knew who he was, he constantly greeted friends and fellow agents, there was one subject firmly off the table. Harry's wife. For while the Duchess of Sussex has moved on with her life, so too has her ex-husband Trevor Engelson. A friend of Engelson, who saw him recently, told the Mail on Sunday, For a long time, things were difficult for Trevor. He's a good guy, but Harry's wife crushed him when she demanded a divorce. When she took up with Prince Harry, he was crushed all over again, because he was constantly reminded of her, because of the publicity around the marriage, and then the drama of the Oprah interview. But that's all in the past now. This is typical of the response of the victim of a narcissist who was the intimate partner primary source. Engelson will have been drawn in by Harry's wife. She'll have used her usual seduction techniques, false compassion, plenty of spicy poontang, and Engelson fell for it in the way that Prince Harry has. She then, of course, will have caused him many problems in the marriage through the sustained devaluation and a disengagement trigger was hit, meaning that she got rid of him. He'll have been perplexed. He'll have been confused. He will have attempted to make things right between them, the fact that he was the one that shuttled between Los Angeles and Toronto to try and keep the marriage going when she was working there. He would be left thinking, I did everything that I could to be a good husband, but it wasn't enough and I don't understand why. Thus, he's left crushed because the relationship has ended with somebody that he loved, that he lost someone who at first will have been portrayed as someone amazing and marvellous. But of course, he will now have learned, particularly if he's had access to my work, that it was all an illusion. Yet he's crushed as a consequence of it because he didn't know what he was dealing with and he's lost somebody that he did indeed love. Thereafter he finds himself in a difficult position because of her prominence through the relationship with Prince Harry. Therefore, she's everywhere and is a reminder of the thing that he perhaps has moved on to seriously dislike as a consequence of the way that she has treated him. Nevertheless, notwithstanding the prominence that she has had, he has sought to move on. And the friend explained that when I saw him recently, he kept going on about how he's the happiest he's ever been, how he loves being a dad, and how he's never felt more fulfilled. Well, certainly, in all likelihood, he's with somebody that actually appreciates him, isn't abusing him, isn't cheating on him, isn't telling him lies, isn't belittling him, isn't invalidating him, and therefore there's a lot to be said for him to have that much more peaceful lifestyle. It also helps, of course, that he's now be able to become a father and that he's doing rather well career-wise, and that his wife's minted. That said, his friend observed, everyone in Trevor's life knows not to mention the M word. He's moved on, and in some ways you could say he's having an even better life than Harry's wife. Indeed he is, because he's not got that vast emptiness with inside that she has, that he doesn't have that daily fight to seek fuel. And of course... He doesn't have the repeated threats to control that she experiences as a consequence of the way that she behaves. The friend explained, He probably has more money than she does now. He's doing what he loves, and he's out of the spotlight. It's the ultimate revenge, and indeed it is. 
Harry's wife's mind will occasionally wander to Trevor. He will just pop up into her head, and there may be certain things that cause her to be reminded of him. It might be a scent that she smells, or a car that she sees, or, of course, her eyes as she regularly views mainstream media and social media may see mention of his name. That means that he comes upon her radar. Her narcissism then causes her to need to get control over him. It doesn't move her to attempt to hoover, because likely her narcissism recognises that it's going to fail. But believe me, if the narcissism deemed that there was a chance of success, she would quite regularly interfere in his marriage and talk to Trevity Trev 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 in an attempt to seduce him once again. She would not respect his new relationship. She subconsciously regards him as belonging to her. That she does not respect the boundaries. That he is an appliance that, while she's not engaging with him, she still has that inalienable right of access to him if her narcissism deems it to be appropriate. And therefore, he could face a hoover from her. It's highly likely that he has cut all electronic ties with her so that she's not going to be in a position to just ring him up. But there are ways and means, of course, of getting in touch with him. But her narcissism probably recognises that he's likely to reject her. Accordingly, she's left feeling envious of his contentment. Were she to read about how he's happier than ever, that he's content, that he loves being a father, that he's doing extremely well, all without her, it will frustrate and infuriate Harry's wife because nobody else is allowed to be satisfied without being with her. Because how could you be? She's the amazing Harry's wife. Accordingly, her narcissism is less likely to cause her to smear him, but it could be the case that she mentions, oh, you know, he did this to me, he did that to me, and therefore Harry has to be sympathetic towards her as she paints ha uh, Trevor to be some kind of abuser. More likely, her narcissism will cause her to simply jettison thoughts of him and suggest that he was a loser and that's why she got rid of him. He, of course, viewed objectively is not. He has seen his personal and professional fortunes blossom in recent years, which is no surprise since he's no longer with Harry's wife. He's been happily married since 2019 to heiress Tracy Curland, a dietitian whose late father built up a $500 million fortune in the mortgage industry before his premature death from complications from COVID in 2021. When he died, reports in the United States claim Tracy inherited $250 million. Trevor and Tracy live on a sprawling estate in a wealthy L.A. enclave with their two young daughters, and for the past two years have co-hosted a golf tournament in memory of her father, which has raised more than a million dollars. They are a very close family and a great couple, the friend continued. Trevor adores his wife and his two little girls. While he's with them, he never stops smiling. Professionally, too, he's enjoyed success. His management and production company, Underground, which is based in Beverly Hills, created the hit TV crime drama Snowfall, which ran for six seasons and starred British actor Damson Idris. A spin-off show is in the works. Angleson represents a roster of up-and-coming stars and, unlike many in Hollywood, has been a fervent supporter of the current actors' and writers' strike. The friend said, Trevor is this quick-talking guy from Great Neck, New York, and in some ways is your typical agent manager. He's always talking up his clients and various projects. But he's one of the nicest guys in Hollywood. He would give you the shirt off his back. During the Hollywood strike, Engelson has been on picket lines, giving people coffee and donuts. Far more than what Harry's wife has been doing was the solidarity that she has exhibited for the writers and actors. None whatsoever. He's not someone who ever sought the spotlight, and he keeps his generosity quiet, says his friend. Unlike, of course, the behaviour of Harry's wife. Trevor's life now is a long way from the one he shared with Harry's wife. The pair met in a Hollywood bar in 2004, quickly fell in love and moved in together. They dated for seven years before marrying on a Jamaican beach in 2011, an event where guests were handed hemp gift bags containing samples of the local potent strain of marijuana. Harry's wife's estranged father, Thomas Markle, 79, remembers Engelson with great affection. I really liked Trevor, he said. He got to know my mother, and he was always so kind and supportive. He was a perfect gentleman to my daughter and treated me with great respect. When he asked for Harry's wife's hand, I could not have been happier. Unlike Prince Harry, who's never met his father-in-law, Engelson enjoyed a warm bond with both Thomas and Harry's wife's mother, Doria Eglund, Ragland. He treated Harry's wife so well, and he's always been so kind and respectful to Doria and me, Mr. Markle said. 
For most of the marriage, Engelson was the main breadwinner. Harry's wife struggled to make it as an actress at one point, becoming suitcase girl on TV show Deal or No Deal, something she later said she felt objectified her. Yet Engelson constantly supported his wife, finding her roles in a low-budget movie called The Candidate and then a part in a film called Remember Me with a very young pre-Twilight star Robert Pattinson. Trevor supported Harry's wife like a rock, a source said. He was the one who paid the bulk of the rent, residual benefit. He constantly built her up, showing that he's under control. When Harry's wife finally landed a decent role as paralegal Rachel Zane on TV series Suits, Engelson wholeheartedly supported her move to Toronto to film the show that would eventually run for nine seasons. Trevor was always loyal to Harry's wife, a friend who knew them as a couple, said when she got Suits, he was her biggest cheerleader. Harry's wife soon developed her own group of influential friends in the Canadian city, including stylist Jessica Mulrooney and Sophie Trudeau. No long-distance relationship is easy, and Harry's wife started drifting away from Trevor when she was in Canada, the source told Mail on Sunday. This, of course, is because he's in the sustained devaluation, and she starts looking around for other people instead. Trevor was told by her she wanted a divorce after a couple of years, and he was devastated. He phoned Harry's wife's dad in pieces, not knowing where it had gone wrong. He was genuinely blindsided. And of course, this is typical of the behaviour of the narcissist. According to the a book about Harry's wife and Harry, funding freedom, finding dollars, Harry's wife was hurt when Engelson was invited to the Oscars and went alone because he only had one ticket. The source said that comment showed a fundamental lack of knowledge about Hollywood. The Academy Awards are the hardest tickets in town. Unless you're a nominator or a big name, it's common for single tickets to be given out. It's great Trevor got a ticket. Why Harry's wife would think she would be entitled to company him is strange. No, it's not. She's a narcissist. She believes she's accessed all areas. Even big stars can't take everyone they want to take. The pair divorced in 2013, citing irreconcilable differences. According to multiple reports, Harry's wife posted her wedding and engagement rings back to Engelson in Los Angeles. Trevor was heartbroken, said his friend. He was ringing up their mutual friend saying he didn't know what had gone wrong. A common response of the victim of a narcissist who can't understand what has happened because they don't realise that they're dealing with a narcissist and don't understand the worldview of the narcissist. As the Mail on Sunday revealed earlier this summer, some have coined the phrase you've been markled to describe how quickly, and some might say coldly, Harry's wife is able to discard one's close friends. David and Victoria Beckham were famously markled when Harry's wife allegedly suspected Victoria of leaking stories about her to the press. It's not so much being markled, it's the behaviour of a narcissist. Harry's wife ditched her childhood best friend Ninaki Pretty for reasons unknown. Again, it will have been as a consequence of the fact that her narcissism would have determined that she wasn't valid enough, that she wasn't providing the prime aims in the way that ought to have been provided, with the consequence that she then finds herself disengaged. Trevor took a while to recover from Harry's wife, the friend said he was doing okay, and then in 2016 it came out that Harry's wife was dating Prince Harry. Poor Trevor had to go through all of that, being approached by the media and even friends asking how he felt. It wasn't easy. At one point, Engelson even considered making a TV series about a man whose ex-wife forced for a prince, but that project was quietly shelved. By the time he met second wife Tracy, he was ready to settle down. The pair tied the knot at a five-star beach hotel in May 2019, ironically in Monte Shitshow, California. A wedding guest said it was a joyous occasion. Trevor looked so happy, so relieved. He's a man who went through the mill. He loved Harry's wife, but he was very hurt by her. All of us who love him are happy he's in such a good place. Mr. Engelson showing the usual dynamic that takes place with the narcissist and his ability to move on from it. Nevertheless, even now people know not to mention her name, which of course would infuriate her because she would not regard herself as the one that caused the problem, but instead she would consider herself the injured party in this relationship. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.